2004, um, we, we invested in setting up a mobile radio station. Um, and we've taken the suitcase radio out into communities to women because having come out of the mainstream, um, I was very conscious of the fact that public service broadcasting had less than 5% programming dedicated to women. Mm. And what did we want to see? Women wanted to be part of the national budget process. P women want 50% in decision making. But they're not seeing themselves on television. They're not even able to watch the 6 o'clock news at night because guess what? They're cooking for their families. Mm. So the suitcase radio has been able to be the technology that we've taken out to women to help them communicate their issues. They're, it's promoting the political agency of women themselves rather than saying, here are these poor rural women. So yes, we're hearing about women surviving on $100 Fijian dollars a month with their families. Yes, we're hearing about women living without electricity or having to work as market vendors. But at the same time, these stories are also talking about what women are doing mm. and how that political agency can be part of addressing poverty. Mm. And it's not just poverty in the economic sense. It's, it's poverty of information and communication. And I think it's also really about the poverty when we're not able to claim our human rights. So it's really ultimately a communication rights issue. Yep. And how do we then... And so with the radio, we've been able to link women from different rural centers together so that they're able to hear that their issue, they're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, in the last year, with the constitution making process in Fiji, we did radio with pictures. So we did television simulcasts. So the whole of Fiji could see these rural women who include women of all our diversities, women with disabilities, regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, young women, but women with that voice that is really about providing the decision makers those strategies that are needed mm -hmm. to, to address the poverty. I mean, you know, it's a, it's, it's without a voice, you don't have any power, I suppose, so it's a way Absolutely, of empowering women yes. by giving them a voice. But how much of it is also about um, uh, women, I suppose, if they're not seeing themselves represented in the media at all? And it, and it, well, because it's exactly that. You, I mean, there's been the Global Media Monitoring Project. Um, we've been involved since 2003. And even in the last study back in 2010, the numbers were very low. Um, and so it's about the content, but it's more than just the news, because now news, even in a Pacific Island country, is about soundbite. Mm. So you're not going to see yourself featured in a two-minute soundbite. Mm. Uh, we're no longer making those in-depth programs. Um, so we need to be able to put women into content and to actually provide that parallel. So community media is providing that parallel and the alternative, and I actually think it's doing public service broadcasting, but it's the content. Because if you're not seeing yourself, if women aren't visible about their political agency, then they keep saying, well, where are the women to, to appoint to the yeah. village committee, yeah. to the advisory council, to local government? So it's really bringing, the wi bringing women Absolutely. into a national conversation and also allowing them to have a conversation with each other, I suppose. And then with the local government, we get them on the record.